And finally, new rule, the Washington Post is wrong. Democracy doesn't die in darkness. It dies in plain sight because enough people think democracy is a luxury America can no longer afford. That is... <laughs> that is pretty much the position of the Republican Party now, that you can vote for anyone you like, but it doesn't count if it's not us. Heads we win, tails we coo. <laughs> I know that some people like to say there's not much difference between the parties, but actually in America 2022, there's more of a difference between the parties than there ever has been in American history. Really, and here's why. Democrats, for all their flaws, still see democracy as the essence of America. They see America and democracy as inextricably linked. They believe that one without the other is unthinkable. Republicans, thinkable. Very, very thinkable. <laughs> Republicans now seem to be okay with America continuing to exist as a country, but without being a democracy. Utah Senator Mike Lee says, we're not a democracy. Democracy isn't the objective. Liberty, peace, and prosperity are. We want the human condition to flourish. Ranked democracy can thwart that. Which is a weird idea for a campaign ad. Vote for Mike Lee, because voting is bad. <laughs> but beyond that, this is a true sea change in American politics. And Mike Lee is not the only one saying it out loud. Here in California, someone named Rachel Ham is running for Secretary of State, and she says, I want to make it hard to vote. I want it to be a privilege to vote. Again, this is a fundamental change. Openly bad-mouthing democracy and saying out loud that voting is a privilege and not a right. Lauren Culp is the Republican candidate for Congress in Washington state, and he called democracy mob rule. And that is a big talking point from conservatives these days, that the founding fathers feared mob rule. <laughs> this from the party that on January 6th encouraged a literal mob to attempt to rule. <laughs> if you violently attack the U.S. Capitol, kicking in doors, breaking windows, killing cops, chasing duly elected representatives out of the building, all with the intent of overturning a lawful election and hanging the vice president for certifying it, you know, in the name of patriotism, maybe you've lost the thread of exactly what it is you're supposed to be loyal to. I'm no constitutional scholar, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't say, in the case of an election loss, break shit and install your guy anyway. <laughs> and... <clears throat> Please stop imagining that you're blowing our minds when you point out that America is not a direct democracy. It's a republic. Yes, duh, of course. Even at the time of America's founding, direct democracy, where everyone who could vote gathered in the square like in ancient Athens and put a white or a black pebble in a big pot. Yeah, that was impractical. <laughs> so democracy added the idea of representatives, and with the addition of a constitution that guided us and protected minorities, we became a republic, that is, an improved type of democracy, not something apart from democracy. Still a system where we vote, the votes count, and the winners, with reasonable restraints, are put in charge. That's the best, albeit imperfect, way to do this thing called government. And we all used to get that. But now many Republicans have decided that democracy is what's wrong with America. A lot of people drive themselves crazy asking Republicans for evidence that Biden somehow stole the election. But that's a fool's errand. In the circular logic of today's right, the evidence that the election was stolen is that they lost. The logic goes like this. We all know America should be made great again. And one side wanted it made great again. It said so right on their hats. <clears throat> So logically, the other side wanted America to stay bad. And there's no way Jesus, who loves America, would let that happen.
Same thing with voter fraud, which has been studied a million times, all with the same result. It's negligible and doesn't affect elections. Again, missing the point. The evidence of voter fraud is that sometimes Democrats win. <laughs> this is madness. Democrats and Republicans have always certainly had their differences. Taxes and guns, abortion, wearing cowboy boots with a suit. <laughs> But neither ever really doubted that our system of accepting electoral loss was what made America different from so many countries who could never get that right. It was, as much as anything, what made America great. Despite the fact that in a democracy, yes, the people who win sometimes get things wrong. Maybe that's why Churchill called democracy the worst system of government, except for all the others. The left today, is getting a lot of things wrong. Police departments gutted, kids taught crazy shit, unpopular thought being scrubbed, trying to reframe America as irredeemably racist. I get the panic. But solutions, short of junking democracy, can and must handle this. What do tough guys and true patriots do in times of panic? They don't panic. But conservatives now sound creepily like the generals in some country where they finally experimented with democracy for the first time and, well, they didn't like it so much. <laughs> I'm afraid we let the voters decide and they fucked up. <laughs> Next month, the Conservative Political Action Conference, CPAC, is holding their convention in Hungary. Hungary? What's the matter with Kansas? <laughs> Well, apparently, it's not authoritarian enough, because the new platform from the right is making the world safe from democracy.